For those of you who haven't seen it, Lily Orchard made a video talking about me, Lizzie, Brittany, and a few others that she has relatively public beef with. Xena and Jess of TGT even made a video responding to it since Jess was featured as a topic. Even with changing all of our names and creating those little graphics of all of us in order to try and minimize any allegations of resurrecting old beef, that tactic tends to do good numbers on YouTube, and with her getting her play button recently, I'm not surprised. It's a great way to grind views and watch hours, and a lot of people do it. But it seems like a lot of folks seem to have forgotten who I am in relation to Lily. Which is frustrating because, well, I was the second person to come forward about Lily being sexually toxic. I don't know if I can call her predatory because that word is very loosely used to the point where its meaning is diluted. But our friendship was not a healthy one. The first of the people in Lily's history to come forward about her toxicity was technically Brit. If you know Lily drama, you know who Brittany is. Brittany was a former friend of Lily in the era of her reign as Ballspawn, the same point in history where she was affiliated with Blake Diamond and during her budding rivalry with Josh Scorcher. Brittany explained a long time ago that along with a friend believed to be a sock puppet named Tara Callie, Lily had been sexually and emotionally coercive with her for a very long time. But I believe around 2018, after a conversation in Barrel was leaked to Kiwi Farms, I had to come forward and confirm that Lily and I had had a sexually involved affair. Even then, I didn't fully comprehend what had happened. But after various therapists, multiple new medications, and intensive counseling at Central City Concern, bless those motherfuckers and the patience they have with me, I've been able to not only begin to heal from that past, but forgive myself for the incredibly shitty person I was back then. Because I was, and in many ways still am, an asshole. Constantly getting in fights on Twitter or Tumblr, getting in trouble, being incredibly obnoxious in streams, and I had an unhealthy level of yes-man attitude. I was so intentionally hurtful to strangers back then, and that's a habit I'm still learning to shut down. I was also so very desperate for Lily, Lizzie, and Zane to love me. So much so that when I found out Lily was a fan of my old friend Sketchy, I introduced them. Only for Sketchy and I to have to part ways when Lily and I fell out. But the fact that I was and am a bit of a shit gibbon doesn't make what happened to me okay. Because while I was friends with Lily, things escalated rather rapidly in private. It started with Lily casually mentioning goofy smut pinups and commissioning art from me as a way to help with my financial problems. I'd been living under the poverty line since I left Ohio in 2016, so when we became friends in 2017, her commissioning me regularly as a favor for a new friend was a gesture that I thought was sweet and appreciated a lot. And that isn't sarcasm. To this day, I still appreciate those first few months. The months before everything started to get toxic. And then, there was a small chunk of time where Lily told me not to draw her at all. I didn't understand it until later I found out Lily had a fight with her now ex about NSFW commissions and lewd art that Lily had been buying. And as a result of that argument, Lily had stopped commissioning smut from people. Overall. It felt weird. We stopped hanging out outside of her server for a while. No more calls, no streams. I didn't get invited to be around as much. I wondered if she even liked me anymore. So when the calls and commissions came back, I did whatever she wanted. No matter how uncomfortable I got. There was a several month time span of my friendship with Lily where she would commission non-consent and zoophilia porn. See, during our friendship, Lily would call with me almost daily outside of that hiatus that she had had. These calls 
would last for hours and were to talk about whatever was annoying Lily or whatever was on her mind. A lot of it was her openly complaining about being dissatisfied sexually with Lizzie. I had no idea why she was telling me this, of all people. And any time I brought up, well, maybe negotiate and establish safe words like Lizzie wants, or even just suggesting Lily talk to her, she would say that Lizzie would have a breakdown any time Lily tried to criticize her. She would also remark that the not safe for work fan art she got was never extreme enough, or, or that all that was capable of making her feel better when she was dysphoric was smut. Because of the constant complaining and the things that she would say to me, I learned to lean into Lily's interests. In order to appease her, make her happy, I would give her what she wanted whenever she asked for it. Explicit sketches of her and Lizzie's OCs, I'd do it. Sexually explicit anons, of course. Gangbang art, yes ma'am, whatever makes you happy. And because my household barely makes 5k a month now and made 3k back in 2017, and my fiancé back then was laid off six months out of the year, Lily would pay double, sometimes triple my asking price. It felt almost like a bribe. And what was weirdest was she always made sure that these requests and discussions never happened by text. Always in calls. Always in private. Never where people could see or where I could prove that they happened. The only witnesses were ever really Jesse or me. At the time, I just wanted to make her happy, make her feel better. Nothing else worked. My advice was never something she took seriously or listened to. And as long as I kept making whatever art she wanted, she'd stay my friend. As long as I kept sending the anons when she wanted, she'd stay my friend. I was such a good friend, right? I wasn't doing anything wrong, right? But I was doing things wrong. I was doing a lot of things wrong. Because Lizzie didn't know about any of it. I felt like I was helping Lily cheat on her. And my partner, Jessamine, knew about all of it and encouraged me to stop believing that what was happening between me and Lily was unhealthy. And she was right. Jessie and I already had a talk about a year or so ago about everything in earnest. And though she has told me that she doesn't see me as a bad person and she doesn't resent me, my wife did feel as if what happened between Lily and I was in fact infidelity. On both ends. That I had cheated on my wife. But nearly every day, there was another call. Another commission she wanted to buy while we sat and talked about kink, about fandoms, about her idiot fans, and her unsatisfying marriage, and blah, 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 blah. I was drowning in the squick and discomfort of it all waiting eagerly for Jesse to get home from work so I could hang up and have an excuse to run away. I swallowed down the discomfort. I did whatever she asked of me, even being in her podcasts and streams whenever requested. I smiled, and I waved, and even took the abuse when she would troll and grief me in front of all her fans on live streams until I cried, a moment now immortalized by fan art. I was helping her. I was such a good friend. That's what she would tell me. Lily wouldn't lie to me, right? She helped me during the tune drama. She made a fundraiser when I lost my SSI and disability assistance. She was my friend. Right? Wrong. I was codependent. I needed her the way addicts need a fix, and it was damaging me and everyone around me. Eventually, Lily and I had a rather public argument about a baby strangling joke she made in her server that led to me leaving. For about two weeks after I left, we didn't really talk to each other. We stayed out of each other's way for the most part. I decided to take care of my feud with Josh Scorcher in private, since the war of attrition we had been engaging in was getting neither of us anywhere good. We came to a calm, comfortable conclusion. Both of us apologized, and we parted ways. 
The day after I announced my feud with Josh was over, I woke up to Lily having blocked me literally everywhere, ghosting me completely. I didn't even get a courtesy explanation until Sketchy looked for one for me. I had to ask someone else to tell me what was going on, and even then I never got a full explanation. I spent a few weeks lamenting the situation, made a couple of posts venting about my feelings, but remaining vague so as not to try to start any fights. Because it's my fucking blog, and as long as it doesn't violate TOS, I can post whatever I damn well please. The stress and anger built up. I started drinking more. I started binging and smoking a lot. And I had a breakdown. A violent one. I sent Lily a series of emails berating her for abandoning me after claiming to be my friend. I lashed out. And I'll admit, I was a dick during that conversation. I sought out to hurt her, and even if I was inebriated and high, it, that's not the fault of the drugs. That's the fault of me being petty and lashing out in pain when I knew that wasn't the right thing to do. But I never denied that I did shitty things too. Not once in any of the videos or posts or conversations I have had have I denied that I am a shitty person and that I have done things wrong. But that being said, $300. According to the emails between me and Lily, $300 is what my friendship was worth to her. Or at least that's how nothing personal, I was just losing money and it stressed me out comes off to me. If that's not what she meant, well, that's on her for being a bad communicator. The very concept that ghosting me and expecting nothing personal that's my bad would fix that is telling to me. We weren't friends. I was a charity case. And what makes this make even less sense is that later on, when Eliora announced her wedding, Lily sent me $800 to try to help me go to that wedding. Completely unsolicited. I wish I still had the screenshots from that. I eventually did approach Lizzie to talk. Specifically to talk about something I had promised Lily I would never tell anyone. The porn I had made and the affair I had participated in. It had not gone well at the time, due to miscommunication between Lizzie and I, though things were eventually cleared up in private much later on. But in the months after that first conversation, I still felt guilt about the things I had done for Lily, drawn for Lily. Hell, I still do now. I vented to a friend many of you will know as Leo Convoy, hoping to find solace and was encouraged to talk about what happened in a Discord server called Beryl. Beryl was very full of people who love drama. But I was encouraged to open up despite this, as several of my friends there reassured me that there would be no judgment, and that getting it off my chest would help me. And so I opened up to them about the erotica I used to make for Lily and the things I used to do for her, and why I regret all of it. The affair, the stress, the addiction to her attention. It was leaked to Kiwi Farms that night, and eventually I had to come forward about it to correct a lot of misinformation. That led to harassment from her fans, and me having to delete quite a few Twitter and Tumblr accounts over the course of a year and a half to escape that torment. Even now, I know that this video will lead to things getting worse again. When Lily found out that the art had been leaked, she immediately started distracting people from what she had commissioned, calling me a drug-addicted lunatic, a drama whore, a cow, a whack job, and delusional. But never once did she deny commissioning pictures of Elith and Lizzie's OC getting violated by dogs. Because I have the records to prove that she paid for that art. No. Instead, she made libelous claims about my character that affected my career and my physical health to the point that I had to go on hiatus to take care of myself. I'm making this testimonial so that people can know the danger of idolizing someone. 
In the past, I have made it clear that I'm not interested in getting intimately involved with the drama surrounding Lily Orchard. But as my old Google Drive comes in and out of circulation, I am frequently pulled back into the conversation, having to correct misinformation and fix people's mistakes. People do so little research when they are given my Google Drive that a majority of the people currently involved in the Lily drama thought I was a woman. It's exhausting, and it feels like people just straight up don't read the documents in the drive, or people make assumptions instead of asking me first, and I have to fix it for them. A lot. And what's the excuse people give? It's not malicious, we were trying not to involve you. I'm going to be very clear and speak with purpose. If a subject is about me or affects me, then I need to know about it. When I say I don't want to be involved in the Lily drama, I'm saying I don't give a shit about her videos about anime or cartoons or books or video games or any sort of media. I'm not going to join the bad opinions crusade against her for not liking the right characters in fucking Owl House. I don't give a single shit about that. Don't come to talk to me about her bad media criticism or her shitty fan fiction or any other stupid pointless drama. I don't care. I understand that sometimes it is hard to comprehend the way autistic people communicate. I get it, but this feels like basic logic to me. Warnings are not getting me involved. And if you're not sure if something you need to bring up to me is something I'd be okay with talking about, Sega Sister has given a great example here of how to approach me about something. In my heart of hearts, I know that most of y'all did not do this with malicious and harmful intent that I was not excluded out of any sort of intentional harm, that I was not misgendered out of any intentional harm, that it was simply easier for you to not reach out and ask, and that you were not doing this to harm me simply out of ignorance. I highly doubt that most of the people involved would be so intentionally cruel, but when you've been stabbed in the back the way I have, in as many ways as I have, then you start to assume the worst of people. Because to me, fact-checking and communicating with affected parties isn't a violation of my request to be left out of the fray. The minute I am brought up, I am involved. By communicating with me after I have been brought up or warning me that someone is planning on talking about me or fact-checking with me if you don't know everything, you are protecting me. And the fact that people who have known me for more than four years are misrepresenting me and not fact-checking is exhausting and heartbreaking. This isn't even just for me. What I learned while working with Zoophile Police and the Senate and Beryl is that if you fail to come correct, you will lose not only your credibility, but your reputation. If people plan to criticize Lily, they need to make sure they get as little incorrect as possible or they will fuck it up. Credibility in issues like this is vital. It determines how you will be approached, and when dealing with allegations of abuse, sexual misconduct, and priming, it could cost you everything. Most importantly, I want to reiterate that I am a human being affected by your choices. Lily's choices, your choices, my choices, all of these affect other people, not just the life of the person making them. I know the Google Drive only proves so much. That there's only so much I can back up. And you don't have to believe me. I know no one owes me anything, but if I am going to be dragged back into this bullshit five years after it happened, I will be heard under my own terms. I will be heard, I will tell my story, and I will stop hiding behind my fear. And I expect all of you to start doing right by me. So I'd like to thank Opal for standing beside me, despite the risk that this video poses to us both. I'd like to thank Empty Brook for going over the Google Drive with me years ago, encouraging me to stand up for myself. I want to thank Jess and Zena of Trans Girl Therapist, Lizzie, Britt, Leo, Coyote, and all my friends and fans for staying with me, even with the unstable mess that I am, giving me space to talk about this in private, and giving me hope that one day I could recover. And to those who have attempted to keep the conversation about Lily alive, even despite my anger and frustration, I do appreciate the intent. And I forgive you for messing up. I hope. 
I hope this is the last thing I ever have to say about my past with Lily. And then I will finally be able to move on. But I doubt it. Be safe, y'all.